the far north of Britain looked very different during the early 7th century to how it looked even just two centuries later. During that mysterious time between the Romans leaving Britain in the early 5th century and the formation of the modern nation-states of Scotland and England by around 500 years later, a plethora of smaller yet no less important states existed throughout Britain and Ireland. One of these states was situated not just in Britain, but in Ireland too. From its capital at Dunad near Kilmartin in modern-day Argyll, the kings of this Gaelic kingdom ruled over a sprawling coalition of islands and archipelagos on both sides of the wild sea between Scotland and Ireland. Its name was Dalriada, and during its golden age, when it was at the very apex of its expansion, under King Aidan Mac Gabrain, it contained much of the Western Isles of Scotland, parts of County Antrim in Ireland, as well as probable overlordship over the Isle of Man, parts of Eastern Scotland, and possibly even the Orkneys for a short time, until Aidan's outward expansion was finally checked by the Anglo-Saxon king Ethelfrith of Bernicia at the Battle of Degsastan in around 603. It looked likely that Dalriada may very well have become the paramount power in the north of Britain. At the time of Aidan's birth, sometime during the first half of the 6th century, Dalriada would be best described as a maritime coalition of Gaelic Christian states, roughly comprised of four clans or kindreds, each with its own territory and local leadership, but all pledging ultimate allegiance to the paramount overking. Separate kindreds existed in North and Mid Argyle, the Isle of Islay, Kintyre and then East Argyle. During this period, rather than the relatively deserted islands found today, many of the Scottish Isles are thought to have had roughly the same populations as they have now, but were much more evenly distributed around the landscape, so as to seem far more populated. The vast majority of these settlements have now long disappeared. Oats and barley were the main cereal crops, but people also relied heavily on pastoralism and the sea for sustenance. Places such as Isle A were very fertile at the time, and even unoccupied islands would be populated with sheep to maximise the land available. For the people of Dalriada, the sea was the roadway which linked their world together. Argyll and Antrim had long formed a maritime province, united by the sea and isolated from the rest of Scotland by impassable mountains. This isolation is perhaps best exemplified by the fact that Argyll remained Gaelic-speaking throughout this period, whilst the rest of Scotland was Pictish Brythonic speaking. Although small vessels known as curraghs were most likely more commonly used for everyday matters, a large and well-equipped fleet of longships was maintained within the kingdom for more serious times, manned by skilled sailors and capable of undertaking far-reaching expeditions. The Dalriadan navy had a highly organised and effective system for manning the fleet, Houses were grouped into twenties for the purpose of naval recruitment, with each group having to provide a quota of 28 oarsmen for expeditions. During Aidan's lifetime, Dalriada became heavily influenced by the Gaelic Christianity which was gradually spreading out of Ireland and converting formerly pagan people to its creed. The famous Saint Columba was greatly respected by the rulers of Dalriada, and he and his companions were able to use the kingdom as a sanctuary from where they could travel to modern-day Scotland to convert the heathen Picts. Aidan is said to have been consecrated by Columba, who he had granted the island of Iona. A unique insular art style began to develop at monasteries founded by Columba, which was a unique blend of Mediterranean, Anglo-Saxon, Celtic and Pictish styles, and created some of the greatest art and writing of the period, of which the Book of Kells is a good later example of. This style would later spread throughout the whole of Britain, inspiring a cultural revolution never seen before on the island. Columba was also a prince of the powerful Northern Uy Neil dynasty of Ireland, and subsequently was able to arrange an alliance between Aidan and Aid Mac Anmerech, the king of the Northern Uy Neil and High King of Ireland in 575. The pact was extremely successful, first in defeating Baton Mac Caril, the king of the Dalnaradi, a common enemy to both rulers, and later in allowing Aidan to campaign widely against his neighbours, knowing his own lands were secure from the south. During this time, the Dalriadan fleet travelled in search of conquest as far afield as Orkney, the Isle of Man, and the lands of the Maytay on the River Forth. Aidan appears to have been very successful in extending his power during this period, until he faced another rising power of the time, the Bernician king, Ethelfrith, at a place called Degsastan, possibly somewhere in Northumbria in 603. The fighting was fierce, and although Ethelfrith's brother was amongst the dead, Aidan was defeated and pushed back for good. Bernician rulers continued their advances in southern Scotland in the years that followed, and Aidan allegedly vowed to never fight the English again. 
He died in around 608, aged about 70. Dalriada did expand again in the years that followed, with the Isle of Skye likely being conquered by Aidan's son, Garnate. Evidence becomes even more difficult to come by in the years that followed, and it's possible that the Dalnaredi, overking of Ulaid, became the overlord of Dalriada for a time. He was a ruler who certainly campaigned against the Northumbrians during this time, and besieged Bambara. The Dalriadans are thought to have fought alongside their fellow Irishmen at this time. Serious defeats in Ireland and Pictland in the years that followed are thought to have ended Dalriada's golden age, and the kingdom became a client of Northumbria, possibly until the 730s when the Pictish king, Angus, led campaigns against Dalriada and brought it under Pictish overlordship by 741. Again, information becomes hard to come by in the period that follows, but some scholars have argued for a possible revival of Dalriadan power under Aid Find, who ruled from 736 until 778, and was supposedly the grandfather of the first king of Alba, Kenneth MacAlpine, generally seen as the first king of the Scots, who some sources say was a king of Dalriada before becoming king of the Picts in 843. Some even say that Dalriada usurped the kingship of the Pictish Kingdom of Fortriu, which was the precursor to the Kingdom of Scotland. From 795 onwards, there were sporadic Scandinavian raids in Dalriada, and in the following century, as more and more raiders came from across the sea, there may have been a merger of the Dalriadan and Pictish crowns to some extent, to form the Kingdom of Alba, which would eventually, over the centuries, become the modern nation-state of Scotland.